welcome now on BBC One, prompted by Ronnie Corbett. Small talk. Powell, Vicky, Paul, Elizabeth, Jason, Sophie, Michael, Victoria and John. They're all here and ready to play Small Talk. And here's the man in charge. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Small Talk. Um, I'm feeling quite good today, I'll be honest with you. The tea lady told me I reminded her of a Chippendale. <laughs> <laughs> or was it a chest of drawers? <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly wasn't a tall boy. Anyway, there we are. We have a video wall of nine angelic faces here, and it's these children, our class for today, who will either help or hinder our three contestants as they race for points. First of all, let's meet the children. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. Don't that lovely. Would you mind telling us all who you are? Hello, everybody. I am Howard Thomas, and I'm seven years old. <laughs> Robert Giles. I'm seven years old. Hi. <laughs> Hello, how are you? My name is Elizabeth Swan and I am eight years old. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jason Tafts, age seven years old. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Sophie Bartlett and I'm age seven. Hello, I'm Michael Rondo Hand and I'm six. <laughs> Victoria Leslie Anka, I am six years old. Hi, I'm John Edward Harrison, I'm age eight. Well, there we are, the notorious nine, our class for this week. Charming and intelligent lineup, or are they? Now we'll find out in a moment. First of all, let us meet the three contestants who are lined up to challenge the notorious nine. Good evening, Natalie. Good evening. Lovely Hello. to see you. Lovely Thank to have you. us with us. Would you, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Natalie, as you know. Yes. Um, I have a young daughter named Rachel and I live in Leeds. I'm a real DIY gardening enthusiast. Yes. And uh, I very much enjoy listening to music, oh. and particularly live music. Oh, live music. Not yeah. so much classical, because I, I brought that up because my father was very, very fond of Tchaikovsky. And uh, then Tchaikovsky got married and that was the end of that. But <laughs> Nice to have you here. Roy, a little bit about yourself, please. Uh, hello, Ronnie. Hello. Um, I'm from Autumn Green, Kent. I'm a finance consultant, and I do a lot of uh, part-time sports, things like power sending and water sports, things like that. Huh? Yes. Swimming and everything? Oh, yes. Yeah. Little water skiing. Uh -huh. dangerous. I've been... Oh, all dangerous stuff, yes, I know the feeling. I've been doing that this morning in the, in the hotel, just to try and keep myself... <laughs> please! <laughs> Having a swim every morning, a few lengths, you know, in the wash-hand basin, and... Uh, <laughs> No, lovely to have you with us. Jean, tell I'm, us about yourself. I'm from Lancaster. I have four grown-up children and two grandchildren. And I'm in, I, my hobbies are knitting and reading, gardening. Good. That's a long enough list. It is, important we all, no, it is important we all do hobbies, isn't it? I mean, I'm a member of a kind of hobbies club, you know. I mean, we have competitions. And they, we had a competition the other night for unusual pets, you know. Only to the lack of entries, one fellow won it with a tin of salmon. <laughs> But it's good for our morale. Well, welcome to you all, anyway. A round of applause for <laughs> Lovely. Well, let me tell you how we play the game. To each of our nine children, we ask the same simple question. And as you might expect, some of them get it right and some of them get it wrong. Now, all you have to do is to find the children who get it right. That is the way, you see, we win points. Okay, let's play the game. Now, I'll tell you, the first question we asked was, what is a toupee? Now, what I, what, what I want to know first is whether you think most of the children did know the right answer, yes or no. Just tell me, Natalie, what do you think? Most of the children did know the right answer? I think that was a bit complicated, these children. I would say no, they, you they would don't. You would say they would not know, right? Roy, what about you? 
I think they're pretty young to wear a toupee, so I would say no as well. You'd say no as well. What about you? I'm afraid I have to agree I would say no as well. Right. Well, I have to tell that most of the children did not know the right answer, so that is instant points for you all. Very well done. <laughs> yes, I will. Now, I can tell you that only three out of the nine knew the right answer, so let's try and answer more points, because if you pick a child from the wall and you pick one correctly, Ten points will be yours. Pick wrongly and you're out for the rest of the round. So you have first choice. Natalie, who are you going to? I think Sophie seems like a real bright spark, so I'm going to go for her. Sophie. Mm -hmm. Sophie. Sophie, what would you do if you were old, Sophie? If I was over 100 years old, I would go to the chemist. Every morning I would go to the chemist and buy a tablet to make me look young and put a wig on. <laughs> I do that now. <laughs> but what's, a, what's a toupee, Sophie? A toupee is a bird, what you see at the zoo with a long beak. <laughs> I'm sorry, Natalie, no points there, and of course you're out for the rest of the oh, round. Dear. Never mind, we'll see you later with the later part of the game. Roy, what about you? Who are you going um, to My sister's Victoria, so I'll go for Victoria. Victoria. Victoria, how does your mum stay young, by the way? Um, she goes out to dinner and she wears sort of... She wears trousers that look like a long skirt and they're sort of baggy. Sounds like my kind of woman, that, really. I mean, what, what is a toupee, Victoria? Well, it's a sort of wig and you wear it on your head. Oh, baby! Still two to find. Jean, who are you going to choose? I'm going for Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. Do your parents try to look younger, Elizabeth? Well, my mum puts anti-winkle cream on. <laughs> <laughs> my dad goes on loads of diets. <laughs> and my mum goes on lots of diets as well. And my dad's always dressing up in um, re these really smart suits and things that mum says make it seem look younger. <laughs> <laughs> My doctor told me to run four miles every morning and four miles every evening. By the end of the week I was 42 miles away. It was awful. <laughs> but do you know what a toupee is, Elizabeth? A toupee is a, a big shaggy Indian hat. <laughs> Nearly, but no marks, Gene, sadly. No part of the restaurant. Roy, now there's still two to find, so come on, Roy. OK. Um, John looks a, a brainy kind of chap. We'll John, John. How do you like to have your hair, John? Well, I'd like to have it like, oh, we've cut it at the front because the, the fringe is always getting in the way. It looks lovely, John. But I mean, do you know what a toupee is? A toupee is a skirt that fastens oh. at the back and goes around your waist. Elton, if you're watching, keep it where it is, won't you? <laughs> no points there. So we come to the end of the round. All the contestants are out. Now, goodness, I have to tell you the answers that remain unfound that were correct. Jason Taft's in the middle. He knew the right answer. And Paul at the top, right under, he knew the right answer. I was rather surprised that we didn't get round to Michael now, because he had quite an interesting theory. Michael, how could old people make themselves look younger, Michael? They could disguise their self. <laughs> Or drink magic potions. <laughs> or they could sort of try and get bigger, try and stretch themselves out and make their crinkle go away. <laughs> At the end of round one, the scores are Natalie five, Jean five, but Roy with 15 points. <laughs> so we go into round two. Now round two is precisely the same as round one, except that the scores on offer are worth double. So if you've managed to get no points at all, you can still catch up. And of course, or oh, very few points can tell. And it's very important this round because at the end of it, we shall be saying goodbye to whoever has the least points, you see. Now, this time, the question asked was Do you believe in fairies? Now, okay, first things first, using whatever knowledge you've learned from the first round about the children, tell me, did most of the kids believe in fairies? Yes or no? Natalie, do you think? 
I think that they're going to say no. I think they're a little bit more cynical these days, children. Right. What about you, Roy? Would most of the children... I believe in fairy tales, so yes. You think most of the people that did believe in fairies. Right. Jean, what about you? I think yes. Right. Well, I have to tell that most of the children did believe in fairies. So, two points instantly there. One point for Roy and Jean. Now... Never mind, never mind. Now, let us try to add to what you've got, remembering that at the end of this round, one of you will have to wave goodbye. Now, I can tell you that, actually, uh, five out of the nine believed in fairies, and those are the ones you've got to find. Now, Natalie, you have your first pick. Who are you going to go with? Um, I do think Victoria would believe in fairies. Victoria, yes. Victoria. What do fairies look like, Victoria? They've got tiny wings, little short dresses, and um, they can fly about the world. Oh, good. Do you believe in fairies? I believe in fairies because every, every time a child says, I don't believe in fairies, a fairy fall down, falls down dead. And I believe in fairies. Right, that's in Peter Pan. Lovely. I was in Peter Pan until my Pan petered out. There we are. <laughs> very well, very well done, Natalie. Now, Roy, you choose. Um, let's go with Vicky. Vicky, Vicky. What do you think of fairies are, Vicky? A fairy is a small, 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 small thing. About smaller than a top of a tiny, weeny pin. <laughs> Depends what you call small, doesn't it? I mean, do you believe in fairies? No. <laughs> because... I don't think they were ever alive. Oh, no points there, Roy. Sorry about that. And, of course, Roy, you're out for the rest of the round. Sad, never mind. Uh, Jean. Tooth. Paul. Paul, Paul. What do, you, what, what do the tooth fairy do, Paul? They clean them and put them in a special factory. And then they clean them. And then you're to go on display in a glass in a glass case in the two fairies' palace. Do you believe in fairies? Is Jessica here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Who's Jessica, I wondered? Why mustn't she know? <laughs> Very well done, though. Very well done. Points there for Jean. <laughs> Three still to find, Natalie. Now. Um, I think Sophie. I think Sophie would believe in fairies. Sophie. What do you know about fairies, Sophie? The most famous one is the tooth fairy, and it's going to come to me for soon. <laughs> Has she stopped? <laughs> do you believe in fairies, Sophie? I don't believe in fairies. They're only little pixies. <laughs> Believe in Pixie, though. No, no points there, Natalie. And out for the rest of the round. So there's still three to find. G. Now who's I it? think Howell. Howell. Where is Howell? Uh, Howell. What are fairies, Howell? They got two wings. <laughs> they got like big crown on their head. And they, and they're like little people, yeah. Just flying around all the time. They just fly around and fly around and fly around. And fly around. <laughs> And one of them, one of them got killed because they thought it was a bee. <laughs> oh, people flying around. Sounds like a saga holiday. There we are. There we are. <laughs> Do you believe in them, how? Um... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> No points there, Jean. All the contestants are out and we get to the end of round two. Now, the answers that were correct, Elizabeth and Jason, and I was surprised that we didn't hear from Michael again because Michael was... Well. Michael, what do you know, Michael? I know about the Everything Fairy, the Sea Fairy, the Shark Fairy, the Tooth Fairy, the Nose Fairy, the Eye Fairy... <laughs> Mentioned everything except fairy liquid there. <laughs> well, 
we come to the end of the round there with the score Natalie 25, Roy 25 and Jean 35. We actually have a tiebreaker situation because Natalie and Roy have, of course, the same number of points. Now, I'll tell you what we do here. We ask this question, you see. Uh, we ask it of Natalie being near him because that's the way we work down the line that way. Now, the question is, Natalie, according to the Bible, who were the first two people on earth? Now, we ask this of Victoria. The question we asked her was, according to the Bible, who were the first two people on earth? Now, did she know the right answer, you think? Yes or no? Yes, I think she did. Yes. Victoria, who were the first two people on earth? Mary and Simon. Oh. <laughs> so, sadly, you've lost the tiebreaker, darling, and we yeah. say goodbye to you. But, Roy, you stay in the game. So, very well. Shame, but sadly we have to say goodbye to Natalie. But of course, you don't go away empty-handed. You take with you this small talk trophy. Is it pretty? Yes. Fair, crafted by my own fair hands. And I hope you put that in a rather important place in your house. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Safe journey home and a round of applause. Thank you. Right, well. With two contestants remaining, we come to round three, uh, which is slightly different. Uh, this time, only six of the children are in play. Now, you each have three turns, and you select the children you play with by pushing the button on the top of your desk and stopping the flashing screen where you most wanted to. Now, let's see what that looks like for example. There you are, you see? Rather pretty, isn't it? Now, this time, you must tell me how you think your chosen child will answer. And let me tell you that the question we asked was, who is the president of America? Now, for each correct guess, you'll get 30 points, OK? Now, uh, Roy, you go first. Paul, now, do you think Paul knew who the president of America was? No. Paul, who is the President of the United States? George Washington. <laughs> yes, very well done. Good choice. Well done, Roy. Gene, who are you going to pick? John. Now, do you think John knew who the President of America was? I think he will. He's very bright. All right. Who is the President, John? Bill Clinton. Jason, do you think Jason? <laughs> who knows? Uh, he's got a wicked look about him. No. <laughs> Jason, who is the President of the United States? Nelson Mandela. Now, now, Jean, your chance. Elizabeth, now, do you think Elizabeth knows who the President is? I think she will know. Elizabeth, who is the President of the United States? Bill Cotton. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Oh, dear, no points there. Roy, come on. Sophie, now. Do you think Sophie knows who the President of the United States is? Yes. Sophie, who is the President of the United States? Bill Clinton! <laughs> Turn of the round. Jean, who is it going to be? How? How? Right. Do you think that How knows who the President is? No. How? Do you know who the President of the United States is? Bill Clinton. No oh. oh. Very good. Now, the scores at the end of round three are Jean with 65, but Roy with 150. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? Well, we hate to lose you, Jean. Of course we do, but lose you we must. But you don't go away empty-handed. <laughs> you also take with you this very lovely small talk trophy. And I, I wish you wouldn't laugh at this lovely <laughs> proud of it. I crafted it by my own fair hands 
and a lovely wicker hamper, specially made for us by Alan Wicker. So, no, <laughs> thank you for coming to play. Safe journey home. Thank you, guys. Well, it's final time. What can I say in our final contestant? Roy here. Good luck to you. Now, let me explain what you've got to do. To each of our nine children, we asked a different question, but you're only going to play with the game with five of them. Now, by now, you should know a little bit about them, you know, by their answers from previous rounds, and, and that way you'll be able to answer more confidently, we hope. And we want to use all that knowledge to pick the five that you think can most accurately match up with your choices, you see. Each child on our wall is concealing a card that is worth a lot of points. Now, four of them hold cards for 50 points, two of them hold cards for 100 points, two of them hold cards for 250, and one of them holds a card reading 500 points. Now, I know, isn't it wonderful? Now, you win the points held by the children you match with. That's understood. Okay, now you've already got a score of 115, so you can work it out yourself how you got to. <laughs> The prize, to star prizes, is a fabulous weekend break for the whole family, and you score 500 points or more, you get that. Okay, now, which of the five children would you like to play the game with, you tell me? Uh, let's go for luck. We'll go for Sophie. Sophie? Victoria. Victoria? Jason. Jason? John. John? And the joke in the pack, Howl. <laughs> oh, right, right. Now we'll say in the meantime, we'll say goodbye to the remainder of the unselected team. Bye bye. bye, -bye. There, we are. there we are. Now, we'll start with Howl. Now, Howl, we asked, would you like to go to the moon? Now, what do you think Howl answered? Yes or no? Yes. Howl, would you like to go to the moon? No. Oh. <laughs> In case someone cuts that little wheel to help you tell a rocket and you'll be in space forever. <laughs> Ground control to Major Thomas. <laughs> Mismatch there, I'm afraid. Now, next one, Jason. Jason. Now, to Jason, we ask, is it important to wear fashionable clothes? What do you think Jason said to that? Um, 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 yes. Right. Is it important to wear fashionable clothes, Jason? No. <laughs> because all fashion clothes are fashionable clothes. Because if, if you um, look back in time, you were fashionable, fashionable clothes. So really, these are, if they're not fashionable, these aren't fashionable because in time these won't be fashionable. So it's all right. If I remember correctly, that did start with a no, didn't it? <laughs> Mismatch there. Sophie Bartlett. Now, to Sophie, we asked, is there anything you know more about than your parents do? No. Oh, um, yes. Yes, she said. Sophie, is there anything you know more about than your parents do? Ah, one thing. My dad doesn't know his times tables, his hundred <laughs> times tables. Do you remember Norman Lamont? Sophie's his daughter. There we are. <laughs> there. Very well done. Now, <laughs> now, Victoria, to the Victoria we asked, should you be paid to clear up your bedroom? Yes. You think she said yes? Yes. Right, Victoria, should you be paid to clear up your bedroom? I do clean my bedroom, up, but I don't think I should get pocket money because you could just, oh. you should just not try to make the mess at all and then you wouldn't have to clean it. <laughs> Mismatch there. This is, this is a bit of a mess. I'm sorry, Victoria. I'll tidy this up. There we are. Now, John Harrison, you're last. We asked John, who make the better drivers, men or women? Now, what do you think he said? I'm not doing very well here. Um, let's have a look. He's a little chap. Um, men. Men. John, who make the better drivers, men or women? I think men are better drivers because they don't like to turn round when people are naughty in the back. At the back, I think mum did this and she crashed into a lamppost. <laughs> Whose fault was that, John, I wonder? There we are. Very good, a match there, excellent. <laughs> So, we end up with two matches and three mismatches. Now, just to tantalise you, let us find out how many points the mismatches were concealing. We'll start with Howell. Howell, how many points were you concealing? 
50. Be point. <laughs> well, that's not so bad. Is that's not too many? Now, Jason. Jason, how many points are you hiding there? Fifty points. Oh, that's not too bad. Victoria, how many points are you? Fifty points. Ah, now a hundred and fifteen. Now you have to therefore three hundred and eighty-five to get. Now, keep our fingers crossed here. John, how many points are you concealing? Fifty points. Oh, three hundred and thirty-five to get. Sophie, come on. How many points, Sophie? Oh, oh, what a shame! Oh dear. Never mind, Roy, never mind. You didn't get the star prize, but of course, you win a night out with as much as you can eat and drink on one luncheon voucher. Um, <laughs> plus, of course, I'm sorry, I've got to bring it out again. The little, <laughs> little trophy. But mainly, thank you very much for being with us. I hope you've you enjoyed yourself. Yes, very much. Safe journey. <laughs> about all from Small Talk, the biggest show in a small world that's big, however small you are, in a big, big way. So let's thank the children. Thank you very much for the day. So, until next time, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from them. Goodbye. BBC One is back in Chigwell with Birds of a Feather in a moment.